If you are a music theory nut or a music purist, you might not want to watch this video, but if you want to learn some dirty stuff about making sample packs, well, yeah. So I did a previous video about the iPad being a MIDI controller via Wi-Fi, and you can do it to Windows computers. So basically what I'm going to go ahead and do is press the space bar, and now I'm going to go over here into FL Studio. And this is polyphase right here. And what it does is it plays stuff via AI and through a predefined scale. But that's not all though. Uh, what I have it, I have it synced to the iPad. So all the iPad is worrying about is just playing the scales. And it gets a little dirtier than that because I can continue to add stuff and pretty much have a sample pack. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Trap Tendo. So I'm very curious of how y'all guys feel about that beginning part of this video because Polyphase is a very strong tool that is AI driven that is on the iPad. Uh, the one thing I really like about it is that there is a barrier entry that you have to buy the iPad and you have to buy the app and then you have to set it up inside of your DAW and you have to have VST plugins and stuff like that. But yeah, you can make a whole bunch of sample packs really fast and I wanna show you some of the more in-depth features of polyphase let's go so what is polyphase polyphase is a midi generator ios app available on ios devices like the ipad and the iphone so basically what i did was set it up inside of fl studio using a network session uh, using rtp midi and the bonjour drivers that i had in the original video so what i have here is the settings inside of fl studio open up and I'm gonna go ahead and explain that. So basically, uh, what I did was I used my network session uh, inside here, uh, which is my output port, and I'm having that send clock, a master clock, to the iPad or polyphase in this example here. And if I just press play or space bar, it will do that. And go ahead and do it here. So now you're just hearing it uh, generate stuff to play as MIDI uh, inside of Expand, which I use Expand because it's a pretty cheap, affordable plugin that has a whole bunch of sounds here. Uh, but I'm using it to uh, to trigger the vibraphones. Uh, I also have it to where I can use my iPad as a MIDI controller over here in the inputs, and that's important too as well. So at the top right of the screen, you'll have that video right there. That's why I did that video first. So the next thing I want to show you is I'm going to go ahead and hit the MIDI button at the top left part and you can set up your network. So you have clock receive. So I have clock receive to my network, which is basically my Wi-Fi, and I have my MIDI input uh, to my network as well. I could use polyphase. I could use whatever I want uh, that's pulled up. And, and if everything ain't working, uh, I would I would have it refreshed to an interface. You can set it up in Ableton the same way. Basically, you would just go from let me go from the start here and go to your preferences and then you will go into your MIDI over here. And if you're wondering if why your Ableton looks different from mine, that's because I'm in the most recent version of Ableton Live, which is 10.16. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I can set the input sync. I can go input sync. I can set up remote. I'm going to go ahead and set up an output uh, and output sync. So that, therefore it will sing, send a clock. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I'm gonna go and just select everything I want. Now I have Falcon set up right here. I just picked the sound and I'm gonna hit the space bar. And here we go. Pretty damn powerful so far, eh? Polyphase in itself is a very interesting tool in which you can open up the app and have instant melodies. Uh, what makes this uh, more alluring than the other ones that I showed in the last video is that it has these four lanes here uh, being represented. So I have this top lane and this top lane is basically the first melody that will be played. Uh, in that top lane, uh, I have what you call uh, different time signatures over here where you see eight in. And if I was to go over here and adjust that, I can adjust the master rate. And if I unlock and show you, 
I can adjust those on the fly. So I, you'll see it go two. So make sure you're looking at the top right here, uh, two. And if I was to go and press the space bar again, uh, you'll be able to. And if I increase it to 32 and it will play really fast, but it's all in sync. So if I was to go over here to FS Studio and hit the metronome, and I'll leave that on so you can hear that it is syncing. And basically it's playing generative MIDI, depending on some certain uh, parameters being operated right now. So what I could do is I can uh, go over here to reset all, which is at the bottom right part of the screen, and hit reset all, and it will reset everything all together. I can randomize the rates as long as I have these little lock signs unlocked it will keep it will keep on generating that so you can actually go and dictate which lanes you want to switch so if I was to hit play again have it play like one lane hit the off button here So it's only playing the top part right now. What makes this very special is that you can uh, have your different, you can have your different scales change. Uh, what I like to do usually is to stay in the major and minor course because it makes more sense that way. Uh, but what you, what won't be obvious here is if I have all of these unlocked, I can start to change it from uh, a augmented chord to a diminished chord to a suspended chord to whatever chord I want. I can even select and deselect uh, different scales that's within there. So the E minor has an A, B, uh, E, C, and F sharp and a G and a G in there. Uh, but you can force it to go G sharp so it can have that different nuance to it too as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on three lanes here. And now it's in a minor. A G minor, and if I go to an augmented, go to a suspended two, so that's where everything starts to separate itself in terms of being able to generate like different loops and. All I basically got to do is pick out different sounds and I can continue to make different uh, melodies and come eventually come out with a sample pack. So I could do other things like a morph notes. Uh, and as you can see, when I hit morph note and when I hit uh, same notes, uh, I can start to do random sequences and stuff like that and start all over again, start the process. And it will generate different melodies depending on what features you have on or off. Uh, but what makes uh, FL Studio very unique in, in this manner is that I can choose which channel uh, that I want to send stuff to. So I know a lot of people are gonna ask like, how would you record something like that? Well, what I usually do is I just hit record and then I just hit play. it up now I know that doesn't sound very musical and it's not like that for a reason uh, what you uh, should do in this process and when you are creating your uh, samples and stuff like that or whatever melody when you want to be inspired is that you uh, go and just uh, let it roll and then switch notes, switch minor. Of course, I'm not doing a good job of uh, demonstrating it right now because I'm more concerned about just showing you what you can do. But yeah, you can continuously create stuff without a hitch. I mean, I can go and do a little bit of chance here. I could do a, a, a reset and just record something different. Mm -hmm. 
So I was going from C to G uh, within the C minor scale. So basically you have your seven keys here, which is C, G, G sharp, D, D sharp, and then A sharp and F. So uh, you can just do different variants between that. So you do have a little bit of control. It's not 100% gonna just do everything for you, though it can, and things like Navichord will take it even further. Uh, but yeah, the, the fact of the matter is, this is an incredible tool that you can just create sample packs without a hitch. All you need is just sounds. That's it, sounds. That's the whole entire thing. And by the way, I wanna end it on this note. Uh, this is a part of the tool that I didn't want to show you. It's not the whole entire tool. It gets even crazier than this.